But your argument falls or rises on whether marriage is the fundamental right or same-sex marriage is a fundamental right. And I think, as I understand what you're arguing, is that marriage is the fundamental right. That's right. Now, if you go to marriage as a fundamental right, it's, I understand there's a bunch of reasons, but where do you stop? How do you stop more than two people getting married then if marriage is a fundamental right? <clears throat> Your Honor, what you have to do, and, and really I think you have a two-part question. First is, what is the fundamental right we're talking about? And then, how do we draw the line between possible multi-party marriages? Um, and let me try to answer both. First, the fundamental right we're talking about here is the right to marry. And this court and the United States Supreme Court have made it very clear that if you are going to analyze a fundamental constitutional right, you have to be careful how you frame the issue, or you might answer the question just by the way you asked it. Uh, one of the things you look to is history and tradition to see if this right is a time-honored right and tradition in this society. Uh, if you go back to the fundamental right to marriage, what you do is you see that people have always had a fundamental right, to, they've always had a right to marry. Now, the question is, what is the nature of that right? And this court has made it clear in Calendar versus Skiles and other cases that you don't analyze the fundamental right on the basis of who has been allowed to exercise it in the past. Rather, you look to the attributes and substance of the right itself. And how do you limit it to just two people if well, you don't look at the tradition about marriage has always been between two people? Well, Your Honor, the tradition, first of all, marriage is an institution between two people, uh, and it is highly regulated by the state. I think Haven't you just defined marriage? I mean, you're, I understand your argument very well on the definitional issue, but you just said, well, marriage is between two people. Well, aren't you doing the same boxing in of uh, definitions that uh, uh, the defendants are? I don't think so, Your Honor, because, and here's the reason, marriage is highly regulated and highly defined in this state, always has been. We have hundreds of statutes, hundreds of cases interpreting uh, various legal rights and obligations for marriage. It's always been in the context of two-person marriage. Now, if you want to get into something like polygamy or bigamy, that is really suggesting a change in the nature of the institution. Well, isn't oh, so that exactly, exactly. same-sex marriage changing the institution? See, that's where I disagree, with respectfully disagree, Your Honor, because, first of all, the institution is what is established by the state, not who's allowed to participate in it. If the same-sex couples are in this courtroom are allowed to marry, my marriage will not be affected at all. I will continue to operate under exactly the same sets of rules and laws that I always have. And they will operate under exactly the same set of laws and rules that we operate under. How will three people being married change your relationship or their relationship? It won't, but they'll have to operate under a completely different set of laws and rules. And that's the reason, because once you get to three or four or five people, then you have a situation where you have questions of consent, presumptions regarding parenthood, dissolutions could present unique problems, inheritance could pr present unique problems, custody problems. It would require an entirely new array of statutes and case law. It would essentially be a new institution. We're not suggesting a new institution. We're suggesting that everybody be able to participate equally in the institution that's existed since the beginning uh, of, of this state. And in terms of the fundamental right, um, you know, I think it's important to keep in mind that, that the fundamental right, the nature of the right we're talking about here, really stems from the Due Process Clause, which respects individual liberty and freedom of choice in very private personal matters and family relationships, areas where the government shouldn't be allowed to intrude. It doesn't depend on who's been allowed to exercise that right. The reason for that fundamental right is because of that right to privacy and liberty. My clients have exactly the same constitutional rights as everybody else. They choose to marry someone of the same sex. Well, that doesn't change the fact that that's their choice. So I think that's why this is, in fact, a fundamental right. I don't think it's a fundamental right to same-sex marriage. I think it's a fundamental right to marriage.